um, review of last <clears throat> match day 23 in perfect betting game, compare with market and check uh, how the games went in German Bundesliga and also the preview of match day 24. I apologize not to have done it on Tuesday, but I was busy all week, so but I'm, I am going to do it now today, Friday, 1st of March, which should still be timely enough. Uh, what have we got? Uh, ah, th those are the best uh, market prices, um, betting market best prices once again, but we will do that later, so I could actually... Uh, okay, here's the review um, um, so far for this match day in terms of well, first of all, results, and second of all, um, this is how the games went by stats. And this is telling me a lot more than the pure results and any preview you would get in Germany, especially on Sky Sports, would refer largely to the results and uh, nothing else matters because maybe either they do not have access to that or they do not know better or they say I know it all when I know the result which is not the case at all and coaches are being sacked all around the world sometimes just based on bad results while the efforts are fine which I could tell you and so this is it's based on bad luck more or less but they say, we'll throw the dice, we check with another coach and see if he can roll a bit better than the previous one. Mm. Roll the dice. Well, it's a mad world. And they all argue about results. But we do know better, at least we pretend. But I'm sure I'm coming a bit closer to truth the truth maybe mm, I didn't show you yet at any point um, that there is another uh, concept someone um, contesting me more or less with this um, also based on the stats this is understat.com you can check that site you will you will find um, the stats for every game uh, in German Bundesliga, but we can compare here, I guess. Um, I expected it to end 1.0, 1 1.55. Um, maybe I should zoom this one here, so one can check this a bit better. Okay, although I lo might lose parts of it. That could be interesting. But if we check here, this is more or less what I expected to happen in this game and this is <coughs> what the stats are telling me. 1.24, 1.76, that is rather how the game should have ended based on the stats they provided. If they say the game should have ended 0.63, 2.22, I'm not in a position to doubt that. Um, 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 it says uh, Frankfurt have been clearly more superior than I would say. But first of all, we, we got the, the, the commentary on the game and the voices we heard about it. And they actually, they said, well, we didn't play so terribly badly. We played okay. This is more or less. And everyone that watched the game could have seen that until minute 60 or somewhere around that, when Frankfurt scored the first goal, it was even maybe Hanover, Hanover a bit closer to scoring a goal. Mm. Although uh, Frankfurt had some chances coming their way, uh, but uh, Hanover also had a couple of good ones. And this is, I find, a bit better reflected here. And uh, also uh, referring to uh, what they said about the game, how it went. 
When they say uh, here we, we can measure the size of the chances uh, and so on, this is what they say. But they would, this is 10% chance shooting from here, this is 22% goal chance, this is 10%, this is 1% only missed shot from corner. Um, it's a, it's a, it would take some deeper analysis uh, to see how big the chance you see here. And this is a 30% chance here. And I was wondering how they would rate this chance. And in fact, I can say this is quite a good rating here. Because this was when, after two minutes already, Jovic was al alone on, on the keeper. So this is, they say, open play, which means it was not a set piece or so. But, um, but he was uh, pretty free, uh, clear, on, on the goalkeeper. And uh, I was rating it about 35% maybe uh, at the time um, being when it happened. Uh, because I thought, I'm, I'm going to check that later. And I thought about 35%, which is a pretty good value, I, I think. Because when you're alone on the keeper, you've got plenty of choices. You could also round him. Or what he tried was chipping him, but he somehow anticipated that and caught the ball. But... Um, uh, but there had been other options too. Anyway, that was a good rating here, thirty percent chance. And I can hardly argue about those the size of the chances because I I do not have access to that, and I couldn't do that, and I wouldn't do it on the other hand, which is I find a bit more important because I would say this is not telling me the story of the game. They pretend it is telling them the story, but it it's not the case. It is, uh, what I think is, when you get a, win a corner, it still is kind of a goal approach. It is kind of a goal chance, even if no one is there for the header. So, or whatever that could mean. I mean, ball is coming into the area and definitely there will be some attackers around. So, um, uh, there is a chance to score. No matter if you, if a striker gets a touch of the ball, touch to the ball. Mm. So I would like to measure that as well because it's an, a kind of a goal approach. And if there are um, uh, crosses coming in, it's the same story. I think whenever there's a cross coming in, he wouldn't do it when there were five defenders and no forward at all. So uh, then he would rather stop and wait for others to come around uh, so uh, to help him. Uh, but uh, if he crosses the ball, there should be some. So this is some goal potential for sure, whether or not it comes to a goal scoring opportunity or especially to, it comes to a shot. If they only count the shots, they, they take a very restricted part of the game, which is also part of the story because you can say, can't score if you don't try. But there is, there are goal chances of other kind. And also, uh, we could simply say, um, I want the story uh, to, 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 uh, to comprise, uh, to contain more than just uh, those shots, right? This is uh, uh, too restricted for me. Anyway, it's quite a good job and I would, I would, uh, I mean, uh, I did some comparison on that and they are doing okay, but of course uh, with this knowledge of this and all this database, uh, they might uh, get, a, get a, um, a good approach, but um, I, do, I wouldn't even do it if I could do it, as I just explained. So anyway, uh, now we know better, for example, <coughs> Verda were even a bit more superior than expected, which is told in this column here, that you see who is better and by how much. If it's a plus sign, it's the home side that performed better than expected. And those 1.2 goals that the computer expected already between the teams was a lot more than market thought, <clears throat> or a bit more. Mm. But they've done so, Stuttgart took an early lead and um, I mean, we could check that here for every game. <coughs> I don't know if this gets a bit... <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
Um, okay, now we see it at, at, at one glimpse, so to say. They say 1.09, 0.59, which is in, in terms of uh, what, what Stuttgart did. It is very close in terms of what, what Werder did. Uh, it's far away. But here, as I said, I'm counting the crosses and chances, and I could uh, also look it up here, where we see what they had expected, and here's what they got. So this is 15 eight shots, 4-3 on target, 4-2 corners, 14-4 crosses. And those 14 crosses, they are not counted down there, the corners are not counted, there I'm a bit away uh, from what I expected, but 15 eight shots. Uh, this is also behind here a bit, but Stuttgart are even more behind. But um, um, uh, they, they would only refer to that and then to the size of the chances. But when you watch the game, or you saw the highlights at least, then you, then you would uh, somehow admit that, that Werder did look desperately close to winning the game. Anyway, uh, here we are a bit away. Um, uh, this is quite a difference, uh, I have to say, but, but I, I would definitely rely on my figures. Anyway, we could check that for every single game and uh, also uh, well, discuss it in some sense. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, for Hertha, uh, Bayern against Hertha, or ta let's take the Mainz against Schalke first of all, uh, 1.46. Uh, they are got a completely different view here. No, this is expected. This is what happened. So Schalke didn't have... Uh, Mainz did not have a lot more than expected, while Schalke had clearly less. So it went in favor of Mainz. So they did deserve the win in this sense. But it's pretty far away from what they um, say uh, they should have won by. By maybe just counting the size of the chances, which is also... <coughs> Uh, one point of doing it. Bayern against Hertha, we also have a pretty uh, huge deviation here. They say Hertha has got almost no nothing and um, uh, Bayern also nothing. So just a single goal in the game, which was the case. I would still say all those, uh, I mean, we could check it again because uh, I'm, I'm a bit... Um, uh, beam use, that's called. I mean, 12 9 shots is maybe not, not the most of, uh, because I expected like 18 uh, 7 and it was just um, 12 9. Okay, Hertha had a bit more, Bayern a bit less, but we have all those corners 11 3 that does not seem to count for them at all, but it does count for me. And if I say that, I expected 6 corners and they had 11. No one could tell me or could talk me out of any corner is producing some goal mouth danger, goal mouth action. And it's also the crosses that most likely had been above the ones I expected. Because, uh, no, sorry, 16-5, and it's been only 11-4. But still clearly went in Bayern's favor. And... Um, uh, the way I translate this into goals is they had not been far away. Hertha had been a bit better, so this one went to Hertha, it pretty clearly went to Hertha by 0.43 goals, which is a good value, decent value, so they were all pretty right that Hertha did come within range of deserving something, but I'm far away from this uh, rubbish, I would almost say. And they talk about, um, okay, let's look at this one. I mean, we can hardly argue still about Bayern deserving this win. Uh, when we talk about Freiburg against Augsburg, uh, that was pretty one-sided, 2.15, 1.05. They got 2.01, 1.5, uh, uh, 1.56, sorry. Um, so here is also a difference, but it would anyway say it's not a 5-1 really, right? This one would say even more Augsburg had not been any bad, they had been close, they could have won a point. I'm not saying that, I, I got a difference of 1.1, so I feel uh, I'm a bit closer. I could check that again, I'm not going to do it. In Gladbach against Wolfsburg, we both agree that Gladbach had been clearly, clearly, clearly on top. Uh, well, I'm saying that, they say it's just half a goal, but anyway, those 0.78 would tell us uh, Wolfsburg did not really... Um, <laughs> 
deserve a lot. I mean, especially not three goals. They sc scored from more or less every given opportunity. So we agree more or less on that. Wolfsburg no chances. We disagree on that. While I would strongly protect my own or um, uh, um, insist on my, my figures being better. If you saw those huge chances, I can't understand at all what they say here. I mean, we can check it, but the view wouldn't wouldn't help us any further. I saw plenty of good chances for Gladbach that simply had to score. In Düsseldorf against Nürnberg, we once again have a huge disagreement here. I mean, Nürnberg know nothing. Okay, I would accept that, but 0.11, this is just ridiculous. I would I would say 0.58 is fine. It, first of all, they did score a goal, and secondly, they did have some other opportunities. Not in, in uh, maybe not on shots really counting them or in real given opportunities uh, to score right away, but goal approach, let's call that. In terms of crosses, corners, possession is also kind of a goal approach if you first of all win the ball. But for Nürnberg, uh, for Düsseldorf, we have a huge disagreement and I would, I would of course insist on my, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna check it now. So they had 19 shots, which is of course clearly more than expected. They had 10 on target with Nürnberg having five and three. I don't know what they count there because five and three is already, I mean five on goal, three on target, seven, three corner count, 38. This is, this is the crosses. They do not count at all. So I'm, but I'm, I would insist, I mean, this was the, biggest figure of all time. I mean, in, in, not in the history of the game, but in the history ever since they are taking down the, uh, those data. Or at least this season, 38 crosses never happened. And uh, so I would once again uh, favor my own figures. This 2-1 was, was clearly too little of an edge. We talked about Hannover uh, Frankfurt already, Gonna look at uh, Leverkusen Dortmund. Leverkusen, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, and they also got uh, Leverkusen as favorites. I got lots more chances here, and but also Leverkusen had been clearly the better side, which is uh, unlike expected, and they are not providing even the figures for expected, which I would insist is definitely an improvement, and it's uh, surely what I need uh, to to uh, do a good job here and and to predict those. Uh, and then uh, what about the Hoffenheim? Why, where is Hoffenheim gone? Uh, next week? Okay, they got that here. And uh, I got a much bigger superiority to Leipzig that I once again would insist, but they can, they can, okay, they are doing their count. I'm doing mine. I'm gonna do it on in this way. Maybe we'll, one could learn a little bit from this. Anyway, we got to check what those results meant to our perfect betting game. And um, uh, I was talking about it earlier on. Draw was the only one that is costly. I would insist that I was good here because, I mean, those figures would strongly support my view. Maybe go uh, understand would not quite agree, but... Um, <clears throat> Um, anyway, I lost here. This was a good one. I was on the right side in Bayern Hertha. I would, I would, I mean, it was obvious already. Understat.com would uh, even much more tell me I was right. But once again, it wasn't to be. Freiburg, that was a loser. Understat were of the opinion that they were pretty close. I would accept, I would give this one to market. Anyway, in Gladbach, Wolfsburg. I was on the good side, but only by result. By stats, I was wrong. In Düsseldorf, Nürnberg was more or less meaningless. Home win was fine. Just avoid the draw, which was happening. In uh, Nova Frankfurt, I would support my figures once again, because as I said here, they were coming close enough. There was no difference. 0.03 is in favor of Hanover. So I would say my evaluation was right. And watching the game, I thought, well, they did come early on pretty close to scoring, even though this Jovic chance was, was there. 
We got to see the game again if they score a goal, which wasn't to be. Here I would strongly insist I was very, very good and also understand, understand confirming that. And here I was also, um, yeah, no, I wasn't good because this one uh, would have been more expensive than this one. And I was hoping for uh, Leipzig to be, to, to uh, for Hoffenheim to win the game. And they were no good, but Understad was of different opinion. So I would say this match day is pretty neutral and maybe the results will confirm that. No, I'm losing again. Okay, 250.77. I'm gonna enter this value here. Two minus 250.57. So it's all going downhill. Can't stop that, but we will see. Um, okay, and here we got 24, and here we got a zero. So uh, I'm stick, um, stuck on that 2706. And now we get the preview of this match day, and I have to shorten it maybe a bit. But as we did see here, bet market best prices, uh, I can quickly show you, and I hope there are no mistypes. If there are difference, it's because there are changes to that. Um, opened the wrong. Uh, <clears throat> this was not what I wanted to see. Uh, it was uh, betting odds. Uh, they are there already. Uh, we can check that. 5.96. Okay, it changed a bit, but uh, minor changes. Leverkusen 144, 483, 7.18. It is now. I'm not going to change that. Anyway. Uh, they all are around, so I'm not quite happy with this site as well, uh, provided here. But anyway, I take those prices as if it were market's opinion. I get my own opinion up here. All those prices are compiled. This is true prices. So the probability for Augsburg to win or to draw is about the same. Dortmund have the edge, of course. They are the favorites. Uh, which we cannot so surely uh, say for every single game. Maybe this week we can. There's Frankfurt Hoffenheim, which is close, but market might make a big, bigger difference here. Also Wolfsburg, Weyer, Werder, maybe not such a clear cut uh, home favorite, but anyway, market will have slightly different view here or there. But I, I tune, I tune those um, probabilities. To 100%, you will still see that it is pre pretty close, 16.78 or 16.11. I have to tune it down a bit to get those one those 4.18 extra percent away. Anyone who wants to take part in this perfect betting game, he has to shape his uh, percentage predictions to 100% on every possible outcome, which is in this case 1x2, home win, draw or away win as soon as you get 100% on all those three ch or on those three chances you can compete or you can at least um, take part in the betting game or do it yourself with your friends, write down percentages and then do it the way I'm showing this here. And um, uh, this is just uh, putting them next to each other so we can see the differences. And what we see here is I have a clearly different view on, on the chance of uh, Augsburg to win. I would argue a bit about it. Augsburg had been performing better um, uh, quite a while uh, while not getting the results. And I also would insist on Dortmund having some focus definitely still on Tottenham. They would not uh, give this game away, even though a nil three is hard to turn around. They will definitely try. So this is t uh, catching some of their attention. It's taking it away. They will not. Be, well, they will try to win the, the title, of course. In Frankfurt, uh, Hoffenheim, um, I'm, I'm, I have a slight, small difference here in terms of. Um, uh, uh, Frankfurt not being such a huge favorite, it's, it's a minor difference. Nuremberg, Leipzig, okay, I would I would instantly um, uh, heads off to, to market. I mean, I, I can hardly support my own probabilities, I would say. <laughs> but I, I've compiled the prices to my best knowledge and understanding. I've done that. 
And maybe there are those um, miracle turnarounds somehow, but Nuremberg have just been weak, no good, and sacking the coach I do not like. And um, and Leip Leipzig did look okay, and it feels as if they, they are going to break them down uh, easily, the defensive. But of course, it's, it's Bundesliga, we will see. Nuremberg held uh, Dortmund to a nil-nil draw in the last time, but they were very lucky on that one. It goes into those stats here, but I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it's not two percent. It's not not massive. Anyway, in Leverkusen market once again says uh, it's much. It's a bit more likely three percent that Leverkusen are gonna win. Hertha, I say, is a bit more likely. So I, I'm I'm on one a home side once again and Hertha. For example, in Schalke, they say again, uh, Schalke is more likely to win. I insist here as well that Man City are around the corner and they won't give this game away easily. They they will try, they will are in there for a fight and especially they won't get it out of their heads that they have to play an important game even if they would say, well, minor chances, very, very low chances to qualify. But still, we are in the Champions League. We've got to perform there. We are playing for the whole world, or at least Europe. Stuttgart, I say uh, Hannover have a chance. It's close to this uh, Nuremberg-Leipzig game. And I say, okay, they are no good. I mean, I'm, I'm here, um, uh, Thomas Dahl speaking, and what, what he says is, is fine. It's, it's very, very all right, but they didn't perform. They couldn't perform. They did start the season quite okay. But coach taking once again going on, I dislike it. In Wolfsburg Werder, market once again says it is more likely that Wolfsburg are gonna win, which I would doubt. Um, here we got the true prices and here we got the turnover first of all, uh, plus the possible payouts. The turnover once again is being calculated by that same old formula we take. My probability um, plus the other one's probability and multiply this with, with 1000. This is, I could change that, of course, I could do 100 here, and this would instantly be divided by 10. Of course, I would do it 50. Okay, I leave it 1,000, uh, and this is my probability plus your probability, or market's probability. This is mine plus yours times 1,000. You could easily check that 23.91 plus 16 is uh, 39, that's 40.02. Uh, so it should be yeah 400.14. There's one digit missing. Um, anyway, it's it's uh, the the mine plus yours. And why it is the the right way to do it is um, um, <coughs> well, <laughs> it's some more math math behind it. And after a while, one one does understand, I think. And here are the possible payouts. So we're we're just Calculating the amount of money we are betting on each other's true price. So the true, true, true price is the reciprocal of the probability. So 4.18 is the reciprocal of this. So we calculated the turnover by those probabilities and we calculate the payout by multiplying this turnover times the <coughs> price. If he bets against me 400 euro on this price, and I would bet against him 400 euro on his price, then he's gonna get like something like 1,600 back, and I'm gonna get 2,400 back. So I'm gonna win like 800 euro. If Augsburg were to win the game on a draw, it's the same story. Uh, I'm, I have to pay out 4.18. Market has to pay out 4.55. Bigger price. I win some money. We calculated the turnover by adding up those probabilities, which is the only mathematical correct method. In the long run, you would see that I'm absolutely right on that. And um, so here I would be 1x. I'm against Dortmund, as I explained already. Focus on Tottenham still, and also Augsburg played better. Market tending to support the favorites by a bit too much. Here I'm supporting Hoffenheim for some good reason, but in this case I have to say all those injured players, like nine players missing. I heard the press conference with 
Nagelsmann when he was listing up all the players, but I know that already because I'm checking on transfermarket.de. Transfermarkt.de. And they can find all the injured players. It's nine altogether. So maybe in some sense market is right here, but they will have 11 competitive players on the pitch, so I would still trust my figures. And Nuremberg, as I said, I mean, we need the surprise once again. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree with the market and I'm losing money. Okay, fine, happens. Uh, here I support um, uh, Freiburg and maybe we can see here already, I mean, I just to prove that my calculation is right, so to say, I accept that Freiburg are underdogs. I only got 16.2% and they got 13.41%. How do I get the right return on that? Because I accept that it happens only in one out of six cases that Freiburg are going to win. While they say it's in one out of eight or one out of seven and a half cases, which is reflected here, one in 6.17, they say in one uh, out of six, 7.45. So I accept it's a very low probability. But still I need some reward for that if it happens, because it happens, rarely happens, which I accept as well. In 16.4% of the cases I'm going to win this amount, while in the other 63.96% um, of the cases I accept the loss of 83.8 euro. So I except four times this loss while collecting only once this amount of money. But if you say I'm going to lose this four times and win this one time, one time then this is still 400, 400, 330 euro only. This is 380, so I still make a bargain. Which as well uh, is true for the market if this, those probabilities were the right ones. Which we do not know I can only see that in the long run, market had <laughs> outclassed me, had beaten me this season at least. It was more or less market results we did have. In Hertha against Mainz, I'm going to win uh, 183 euro while I lose here and here a bit more than that. So in the in the lower probabilities, I, I lose more than that. So I need more than 50% obviously for Hertha to win because otherwise I would lose in the long run because I would have to pay. If this were only 50%, then in the other 50% of the cases I would lose this much, so it would be a bad deal. If it were 57%, as I say, I'm doing fine because I get this more often than I have to pay out this and still make a little bargain. Anyway, I'm supporting Hertha here, uh, not strongly so, but I think it's a good bet. And here I do support Dusseldorf, we got the phenomena. Uh, that uh, Schalke are to play uh, Man City, but they also didn't play well in the Bundesliga, while Düsseldorf actually did play quite well, and it's a derby as well. So in some sense, um, I'm yeah, I'm happy with this evaluation. Still, I would accept that I lose twice this much and only win once this much. In Gladbach Bayern, the usual thing, the common thing: lose a little on Bayern, win a bit more on them. This, you, gotta, you can lose this three times and only win this once and still are doing fine. But it's gotta happen first, of course, here's the same thing. Mm. Uh, true, <laughs> Bayern have to play Liverpool on uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, I'm not sure. But at least midweek and they will have full focus on that. No matter, they would like to win the championship maybe, but to beat Liverpool is top task or goal. Here I support Hanover. Uh, I mean, Stuttgart did not play well at all, but they didn't play well either. I'm not well. I'm, I am. This, those are my figures. Market, slightly different view. Here I support Werder. I strongly do so. I think main derby, derby doesn't really count for me, but um, although they would call it derby of the north. But um, I think Werder did play well, while Wolfsburg largely got the results without playing so well. 
just average they played, which my stats would tell me as well. So I'm through with this one and see you back on Monday. I hope this time I'm doing better that the fixing the uh, or getting done with all the other stuff I gotta do. Thanks a lot for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. <laughs> that order. <laughs>